to tell her what we've decided then? Although Polly Flint was sad at leaving home, she was glad because her father would be let out of hospital to come to Aunt Em's too. Every night, her dreams were haunted by singing children dancing round a magic maypole. A maypole in the month of May. It's magical, or so they say. <laughs> When Alice and Polly arrived at Wellow, it seemed to Polly at least already familiar. And in the instant of seeing it, she knew that she had been right. It spoke to her in her bones. Even now, in broad daylight, it spelt utter and certain magic. A maypole in the month of May is magical, or so they say. Um, Polly! Polly! So, you'll be Polly. Sticks and stones. She's got bones like sticks and stones. How do you do, Aunt Em? I'm pleased to meet you. I don't think. Well, come along, child. Help with the cases. Smells of polish. A bit like a hospital as well. Hark at that clock. Talk about tick tock goes the clock. Drive you bar me that tick cord. You'll be tired, Alice, after the journey and all. You'd best go and lie on your bed while I get the tea ready. Best what? Lie on your bed, rest. Oh no, I'm only ever so little tired. Besides, I want to help you get the tea. That's exactly what I don't want, Alice. Now, look, Em, I can't have you waiting on us hand, foot and foot. Now, look, Alice, there's one thing that's got to be straightened out between us before we even start. So I'll sit you both down and listen, for it must be said. Now, you're here to stay for a bit, and I'm glad to have you. I do as much for anyone, I should hope, leave alone my own flesh and blood. Oh, I know, I'm forever so grateful. But, but, this is my house. Home. And more especially, Alice, it is my kitchen. There's only room for one woman in the kitchen, Alice. Oh, but surely just to make some scones or I'll bake a bit of bread. No. Home. I've been here 30 years, near on, and I've my own way of doing things. I don't like fuss and I don't like change. No, um. Poor ma'am. She'll eat it with nap to do. Does that mean I shan't have to make my bed, Aunt Em? You will make your bed, and I will look at it. And if you haven't made it right, I'll teach you how to make it right. Oh, thank you. Good. I'll show you your rooms. Oh, oh this is nice. This pretty bedspread. It's all patchwork. Oh, do you know, I believe I remember this from when I was your age, Polly. Why are we whispering? <laughs> <laughs> Here, Polly, get on the cover. <laughs> Here, use this. And if you don't make it right, then I'll teach you how to make it right. <laughs> oh, don't give up. <laughs> You'll set me off again. Anyway, it is nice. You'll have to admit it's much prettier than at home. Oh, 
We must try and fit in. You will try, won't you, Polly? After all, it is a big upset for her, having all of us moving after all these years on our own. You will try, won't you, Polly? Yes, ma'am. Up now. Come along, child, eat up. That's what I like to see a nice clean plate. I do detest waste. That's what you used to say when we were little. <gasps> Did I? Mm. Fancy. Come along, Polly, finish that up and then we can go on to the trifle. I don't think I can eat any more, Aunt Em. It's the excitement. She's usually ever such a good little eater. Well, there's no need for her to have the trifle. It's the one I used to make, your favourite, Alice. But she has got to finish what's on her plate. You shouldn't take what you can't eat. It was already there. Stop fussing, child. Eat up your ham. Ugh. I'll be sick. I know I will. Bet she don't eat what she don't want. I can't. I'm sorry. I hope you know what you're encouraging, Alice. Just hark at that clock. Roll on bedtime. Let's be those dishes. Just two. She is kind. That trifle was always a favourite of mine, and she's remembered it after all these years. I think we're going to be a bother to her. Don't say that. I'm only saying what I think. And Dad says I should always say what I think. Oh, and tomorrow he'll be here. Mm. And won't it be wonderful after hospital? Your father is inclined to see everything as wonderful if he can. Even if he's flat on his back and can't move a step, he sees everything as wonderful. Oh, I know. <laughs> Aunt Em says that maple's one of the oldest in the country. Mm, there for centuries, she says. Yes, Mum. Don't say a word more, Polly Finn. My secret. Mine. Oh, well. Tomorrow's another day. Oh, Mum, you are daft. Of course tomorrow's another day. It was just a matter of speaking. And like you, Polly Flint, to take me up on it. Good night now. Good night, Mum. I do like it here. Really, I do. Oh. cry a bit. Poor mum. Still it is all for a reason. Dad will get better. He will. He will. I know that you and me are to meet. And I know you have a secret. And I shall find it. spell. Oh well. It's like Mum says. Tomorrow's another day. You'd best not go too far, Polly. Not if you want to be here when your dad comes. No, Mum. I won't. You're new here. I'm not. Everybody knows who I am. You 
just come out of old Hag Riddler's house? My Aunt Em lives there, and she's not an old hag. Stopping with her, are you? I might be. Pity her, then, old hag. Be new. I'm Polly Finn, and I'm stopping with my Aunt Em. Miss Riddler of the road. Oh. Shall you be stopping long, Polly Flint? It depends. Could be, but my dad's poorly, you see. Oh. But uh, you'll be here for the May dances. Oh, I shall. I can hardly wait. They'll deck that pole with garlands and brave ribbons. And dance the old dances. Have they told you? Told me? What? Of the lost village. Ah. Uh, they not all believe on it, see? But me, I know it to be true. Tell you, shall I? Uh, hundreds of years ago, oh, Hundreds and hundreds. There was a village standing where we are now. Right here, on this very spot. What does he mean? There still is a village. And the name of that village was Grimstone. And it wasn't very big. Oh, no. Not at all. And in fact, it had hardly the number of children it needed for the May dancing. And then, one May day, it vanished. Vanished? Vanished. Or, as some believe, was swallowed right into the earth. Uh, legend goes that if you kneel and put your ear to the ground on Christmas day, you can hear the church bells ringing away down there. What I say is, you can hear them bells any Sabbath, if you will. Really hear them? Through the ground? Aye. Just lay your ear to the turf. You can hear them ringing away. Sweet and true. And that ain't all. Signs for them with ears to listen and eyes to see. Voices, flitting shapes and shadows. Music, yeah, reflections. You'll get by that lake and you'll be but a fingertip away. Water. Water always finds its own level. You mean... You mean that there's a village down there still? What I say is that when the earth opened to swallow it up, in that very instant, it slipped the net of time. Polly? Polly, can you come on back? I want you. Yes, ma'am. Me, ma'am. I've got to go now. Thank you for telling me the story. Goodbye. There you are. You keep away from that old Maisie, same as everybody else does. Is that his name? Old Maisie? That's what he's called. Maisie in the head, of course. How long has he lived here? Lived? He doesn't live here. And that's for a good job. He turns up every year, about this time. Stops for a few weeks, then gone again. Till next year. You leave him well alone, do you hear me? From under my feet, if you please. You're having a spring clean, Polly. Mm, a thorough spring clean. But... Can I 
help. Nobody can help. Why has she got to pick today out of 365 in a year? Oh, it's just her way of showing us it's her house. Keeping her end up, that's all. This house is much too clean already. <laughs> It was Tom, coming home at last, or at least to a kind of home. Oh, Dad. <laughs> oh, it does seem funny. You should see yourself. Oh, uh, laughing at me now, are you? It's just that all this. And Dad, you should just see what's hanging above your head. Aye, uh, sampler. I can see that. Oh, no, I can't read it. Go on, tell. Cleanliness is next to godliness. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see the maypole? Ah, just top of it. It's magic. So you best keep your eye on it. And you never guess what else. A magic village under the earth. Old Maisie told me. Said it slipped the net of time. What does that mean, Dad? I don't rightly know, Paul. But it's surely a beautiful picture to keep in your mind. Beautiful. You can make a rhyme about it. And me. I'll go and find that village. If it's there. Right. That's a good lass. Oh, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you cool. Watch out for that lake. Do you hear me? And don't get up to any mischief. If I could think of any mischief, I'd get up to it, all right. I would. Definite. <laughs> Take off my shoes and paddle over, shall I? <gasps> oh! What's the task to you two? Polly Flint was dumbstruck. It was the biggest stretch of water she had ever seen. Not counting the sea, there was not a single other person in sight. Even the sky seemed bigger and emptier than usual. All those birds, ducks. This is my kingdom, my kingdom, and I'm the queen. <laughs> They understood. And so Polly Flint eagerly explored her newfound kingdom, taking it all in, bestowing names left, right, and centre. I name you. I name you the secret tunnel. Swans, really, royal birds should be. I don't care, I'm a queen and you are my royal ducks. You're beautiful. You're the silver pool. Yes, that's it. I am queen and I name you the silver pool. You get by that lake and you'll be but a fingertip away. Water always finds its own level. Tis my kingdom, then. It's true. From that time on, Polly Flint began to live in two separate worlds. There was the world of every day, of clocks ticking and rain falling, and the polish-smelling kingdom of Aunt Em. And then there was her own secret world where she reigned over her own kingdom, and even time seemed to stand still for her. And then she went for the first time to the village school. 
And later that evening, she watched the children practicing their steps so that she could copy them. No use dancing dances with the birds. It is. You don't understand. It's magic. You have to do it at the break of day on May Day. Otherwise, it don't count out. Lower your voice, if you please. Fine audience, you get a crack of dawn. No good. They'll never understand. Never. And there's another thing. They don't even have a May Queen. Well, suppose you fancied yourself as that, miss. Oh, funny that. Usually a Queen of the May, I thought. They don't hear. They have a gypsy king and queen. Who ever heard of that? I always have. It's a boy and girl picked every year. Gypsy king, gypsy queen. I think she knows it all, and she don't know out. From that moment, Polly Flint decided that she would celebrate her own May Day. She wove the steps back and forth around a silver birch tree that she had cast as maypole. Something that does must. Try it once more, better. It's tomorrow. I must get it right. Dreamt it. All that spinning around. On this occasion, Polly Flint herself couldn't believe her own eyes. She wandered home, and from time to time she shivered. It was the eve of May Day, and already magic was abroad. It isn't spring till you can plant your foot on twelve daisies. That's what Mum always says. I'll make a crown of them. Yes, I will. To wear tomorrow for when I'm dancing. I'll wear these, and I shall wear my nighty. The long white one. It'll look near the proper thing. <laughs> 